see what I'm doing right now. There we go. Oh. How you doing? How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. Just setting this up real quick. Just going to share with everybody and we'll get right into it. I'm Jared Blakely from Blakely Law Firm. And I know you have a lot of choices when you're deciding which firm is going to represent you for your car accident and injury case. That's why I'm always honored when Blake. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Let's see, we go here. Do this. Da, 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 da. There we go. And we're good. And we are in. You see if I can move this over. No, this is what I need this to be. Oh, I can. I think I can do it here. How can I manage the chat? Manage chat. Manage chat. Manage chat. 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 This is gonna go on this screen, just in case. You know what I mean. I can't have you guys looking at all my emails. So we're going to go here and we are going to go straight into it. All right. So we're going to get right into it, guys. Sorry, just uh, setting up everything, but we are good to go. Um, Yak Tube. So you are my first viewer, my first question of the day. So let's get your answer, your question answered right off the bat. How can I position myself without the ball? I am a left attacking midfielder. Amazing. So, couple of things, Yak. We are gonna start off with the blue team. Um, we're just gonna put you into a 4-3-3, okay? Um, we're gonna look at the basic positioning first, and then we're gonna introduce the, the defenders and the other team and the formations and all that. So. If this is you, you're going to be number 10, okay? One of the main things that you need to remember is you need to try and receive in between lines. What do I mean by in between lines? So if we, we're going to use uh, blue today. So if we are looking at the opposition team, no, let's not do red, blue, let's do red. If we're looking at the opposition team, they're going to have their defensive line right here. And then they're going to have their midfield midfield line right here. And your job as an attacking midfielder is to be trying to receive in between those lines. Okay. Now, one other thing that if we dig a little deeper, now can we try to find 
those passes in the pockets of space. Pockets of space. What do I mean by pockets of space? You are going to have the defenders there where maybe it's going to be the center back. This is going to be the right back. Center back, everybody's going to be shifted over. Okay. Left back. This is you. Remember, this is still you, number 10. Yak, okay. Your winger is going to be wide. Center mid. Uh, sorry, right winger. Center mid. Center mid. We're all going to be shifted over like this. Can you, as a 10, try to be on the blind side of these players? Blind side of these players, what that means is basically you are behind them. They don't see where you are and you're constantly moving in between the midfield line and in between the defensive line. So when you are in between those two spots, you are also going to be in the pockets of space. Pockets of space meaning between the winger, center mid, center back. This There's a little pocket of space right here. Okay? So when you are in those pockets of space, can we find those passes in there? For example, if your center mid has a ball there, can we make ourselves available so that your center mid can break that line? And when you receive in that pocket of space, what happens is... If you are aware that you have a little bit of space to turn, you're going to be able to turn, and now you can attack that defensive line. And when you attack that defensive line, what happens for you as a 10th? You create an attacking opportunity. You create an attacking chance. And that is your job as an attacking midfielder. But before we can even create anything, we need to position ourselves in the correct areas in order to give ourselves a better chance to create those opportunities okay so beto thanks for joining in best traits you look for in a winger look i'm gonna pull up this document for you guys right here um and this is a document that i used to send to all my players that really covers exactly what it is that you need to be Possessing as a player. Where is it? There we go. Here it is. In every single position. So here it is. Okay. So you are asking me what are the best traits to look for in a winger. If we go down down to winger, and you guys, you guys can download this. You guys can download this for free in uh, on the website in my in my bio. Okay, so look, best traits for a winger, we go down to winger, boom, here they are. I break it down to the four main pillars. What are the four main pillars? The technical, we have the technical, we have the tactical, the physical, and the psychological. So if we break it down for the technical aspect, as a winger, you have to have a good first touch. You always have to have a good first touch. This could be for any position. But for a winger, you got to have a good first touch because a lot of times you're going to receive under pressure. A lot of times you're going to be receiving with your back to goal. A lot of times you're going to be receiving in a tight area. So you have to have a good first touch. Running with the ball, there's going to be the opposite side now. There's going to be moments when you have space to progress play. You have space to dribble. You have space to cut inside. So can you run with the ball at top speed, medium speed, whatever the case may be. Dribbling to create his own, his or her own. What does that mean? You dribble to create space. You dribble to create opportunities. You dribble to attract players to open up space for your teammates around you. This is what I mean by dribbling to create. Shooting and finishing. As a winger, of course, you're going to be in areas where you have the opportunity to finish. You're gonna have the opportunity to take a touch and shoot. You're gonna be in and around the 18. Maybe you beat a player 1v1 and you cut inside. You're around the 18, the top of the 18. Can you curl it in? You're, you're making a run, your striker, your number 10 finds you. Can we have a good first touch and take a 1v1 with the keeper? Ability to play the final pass. This is a good one. A lot of wingers are fantastic dribblers they have space uh they have pace sorry 
they have the speed, they're quick, they're agile, they create this opportunity to make these chances happen. But then their final pass, too heavy, too short, gets intercepted. Their crosses go out of bounds. All these little things. That's what I mean by the ability to play the final pass. What is their decision making in the final third? How do they decide what is the best decision in those moments? Okay, so we move on to the tactical constant penetrating threat. Basically, as a winger, you want to be able to consistently be dangerous on the ball. So if we go back to my board here, you know what? Actually, give me a second, guys. I am going to add in my, my people from uh, from IG Live so they can join in too. All right? Give me a second. We are setting up this camera right here. We got to make sure everybody sees us, man. We got to make sure everybody's tuned in. guys there we go uh, we're good we're good all right my fault okay guys so we're also going live on IG just want to make sure that we are good to go this is my first time doing a YouTube stream so uh, let's see how you know how it's working my fault guys. Okay, so uh, Where were we as a winger? So as a winger what we're looking to do if we go back to Constant penetrating threat if we are looking at number 11, okay number 11 where the constant penetrating threat is your ability to find the space and your ability to identify the space, okay? For those of you guys on IG Live, join the channel, join that YouTube stream. We are live on YouTube. I just wanted to let you guys know on IG, you guys can join in on the YouTube channel and we can, uh, you can see what we're talking about, okay? So, constant penetrating threat. Your ability to identify that space to take that space and go at that defender. There's gonna be moments, for example, this little this little tiny bit of space, guys, right here, this little tiny bit of space. How aggressive are you? Do you hesitate? Are you confident to make that dribble? Guys, welcome, welcome, IG, welcome. Uh, let me see if I can get the link for you guys, actually. There we go, there we go, here we go. There we go, there we go, boom. There's a link. How do I pin this now? Pin post, pin comment, there we go. Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. How we doing guys, how we doing? Perfect. Uh, focus, nobody bothered me, no phone calls coming in, please. Link is pinned in the comments, guys, okay? So as a winger, being able to identify that little bit of space, being having the confidence to take that space. If we go back to the, the PDF, that's what's gonna make you a constant penetrating threat. Your first thought is, can I go forward? Of course, if you receive with your back to goal um, and you have somebody on your back, then Trying to turn that player is gonna be just a little bit more difficult, but if you have the ability and confidence to try that, why not? If if you see that it's too tight, for example, I love to tell you guys that when you guys are playing in these areas, you need to identify the numerical situation. 
if it's three three versus one right here for the for the winger does it make sense to turn into all that congestion does it make sense for you as a winger to turn into this space when it's three versus one most likely probably not why because the chances of you losing possession in those moments increases and then what happens is now everybody on your team is yelling at you everybody has to track back everybody has to restart um restart play like to track back try to win the ball back and all that stuff that's what we don't want right so pick and choose the moments as a winger that if you are in a numerical disadvantage can we just restart play let the ball circulate wait for our moment to happen again that is very important okay guys if we look at the next the next thing movement off the ball so this is a very important attribute for a winger um, we've I've covered so many videos on the movements okay so a couple things is let's say your the ball is with the center mid okay there is a couple movements that you need to be making. For example, if the center mid is on your side, what are you gonna do? You're gonna make the field big. You gotta get wide. You gotta maintain that width, okay? Unless you're instructed otherwise. Sometimes you have to stay in the half space. Sometimes uh, you just gotta stay pinning the fullback high. This all depends on what your coach wants. For me, for example, I'm always gonna be talking about how I want it to be played, okay? So, for example, if I am a winger, I am looking to maintain width, okay? So what I mean by maintain width is, right now, this passing lane is blocked. Get wide, get wide. If your fullback is out there, then yes, you stay inside. If your fullback is there, there's no need for you to get wide. You stay inside, okay? If your fullback's down here, then you get wide. Not deep, wide, okay? So that's what we're looking for, for you to become an option, a passing option. You're not gonna get the ball every single time, but if you do get the ball, what happens? We can progress play, okay? Man, this, this stand is falling on me, guys. I'm sorry, let me, let me switch it around. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second, give me a second. I think I'm doing it wrong, that's why. There we go. There we go, much better, it's not falling no more. Guys on, um, on IG, I'm sorry, I haven't seen the comments. Let me see, let me see some of the comments. Wow, how many are we? 27 right now. Guys, join in on the YouTube live if you want to see what we're talking about. This is our very first stream, eh? A stream. What is the best drills to get more technical? Lots of ball work with the wall. I think that is probably the best way to get technical by yourself. If you don't have a partner, if you don't have a training uh, with a team, just get it to the wall and just start knocking it. We start right foot, left foot, inside the foot, outside the foot, laces, chest, thigh, headers, hitting it with pace, hitting it with a bounce, over and over and over. That's the best way you're gonna get more technical, guys. Um, okay, so we continue with the wingers. Last last bit of the, the thing with the wingers. <clears throat> Another tactical moment, position responsible on both sides of the ball. What does that mean? Uh, offensively, can we provide that width? Can we provide that danger? Can we provide that those moments of threat as a winger? Defensively, can we at least get back into position to occupy the spaces? Can we at least get back into position to occupy the passing lanes so that the opposition doesn't have that easy penetration through our side or through those zones, okay? Um, and then lastly, 
physical speed, endurance, agility. Yes, majority of uh, the profiles for wingers, they have that quickness, right? Um, and then psychological, creative and risk taker, mentality of team first, aggressive intelligence. So yes, when I say creative and risk taker, meaning you're not afraid to make mistakes, you are confident to express yourself consistently on the ball. This could be, you know, whatever skill moves you love doing. Uh, this could be, uh, you know, the drop of the shoulder, just confident on the ball. Believe it or not, guys, when you guys are playing, people on the outside can tell if you're confident on the ball or not, if you know exactly what you're doing, okay? Um, mentality of team first. Yes, you create these moments of individual brilliance, but those moments are created in order to put the team ahead, to create chances for the team so that we can win, right? That's the main objective always. Uh, aggressive intelligence, uh, basically meaning knowing exactly when the space is there and I'm going to take it. Or I have a moment when I'm one-on-one -on -one with a keeper, I'm going to take it. I don't hesitate. So I'm, I'm aggressive. I'm aggressive in those decisions. I don't, I don't hesitate. Okay. Let me look at these comments on uh, Facebook real quick. How do you practice your IQ and help you understand your position? How do you train your thinking patterns or to think quickly? All right. So that is a great question, uh, Luther. So let me, let me show you real quick. For example, if we go to YouTube, okay, go to YouTube. YouTube is your best friend. Um, and I, I am a center mid. I want to learn center mid movements okay um i go how to play center midfielder in soccer and football whatever and there is going to be plenty of videos out there okay plenty of videos my video should be somewhere in here but you know it gets it gets lost in there there we go how to play defensive midfielder that's my video guys Okay, I try to break it down as as much as possible, but there is also a bunch of other quality videos out there. So, literally, just go to any one, and and let's see. I'll, I'll I'll tell you exactly what I mean. Midso Junior, this guy's great. So we go to this one. Like a good neighbor, okay. stay farm is there. And our main Chase. thing is we want to look at the main patterns that often happen. So, for example. As a center mid, the pattern that typically happens between the opposition's block. I'm gonna mute him for a second. One pattern that usually happens is center back might have the ball, full back might have the ball. You as a center mid, you as a center mid are often that connecting point, right? So if we go back to my board, I'm gonna clear this up real quick, guys. New project. Do I wanna save? No, I don't wanna save. So I'm going to just basic positioning, okay? This is just a rule of thumb. It obviously changes throughout matches. It obviously changes when you are playing in different areas, okay? But you as a center mid are usually that connecting point between these two players, okay? So it's going to look something like this. We're creating this little triangle right here, okay? Now, if we integrate our other center back, put him right here, okay? And we move this player over as a center mid, you are often, again, creating that triangle between you and the two center mids, uh, sorry, two center backs right here, okay? You are often that connecting point. And then the same thing will happen when you have your 10 and you have your eight. Now you're the bottom of the triangle here, okay? So everywhere is basically just triangles. This is the most basic way to kind of remember things, okay? Um, now when, it, when, I'm, when I'm talking about patterns, when um, you're, we're talking about patterns you train in, the way you train it is just playing more. So now that you've seen what I've just shown you, how can we identify that when we are playing in the games? 
it's going to be a little harder because everything happens in a matter of seconds. So when everything happens in a matter of seconds, you got to think quicker, be able to identify this quicker by being able to identify this quicker. It's going to allow you to make better decisions when you do get on the ball. The most basic way and the most easiest way to do that is just understanding where the triangles are being made for you as a center mid. So if we just, I'm gonna just real basic guys. Again, this is just real basic. I want you guys to understand the basic fundamentals of the movements before we get into bringing in the, the defenders and everything, okay? So for example, center back has the ball, okay? Center mid, you wanna be an option. Now, there's a lot of factors that come into play, okay? What is your build-up situation? How does your coach want you to build out? What is the pattern that you guys are building out? Okay. On top of that, you got to understand where is the space? Uh, where are the defenders? Where is the? Where are your teammates located? Okay. What movements are you typically making with your team? If you guys have not covered this or learned this with your team, then guess sometimes it's gonna work, sometimes it's not gonna work. But just like in basketball, there are patterns in soccer, believe it or not. Um, you guys see it every day, every weekend in the Premier League, La Liga, Serie A, Champions League. There are certain patterns that, that teams do consistently to build out of the back, to progress, play forward. Um, and usually, you know, other your teams, if you have a great coach, they're going to practice that at training every single day. That's what makes it so uh, easy to get out. If you guys are young players, like uh, teenage teenage age, you guys have probably played against a team that is really good. They possess the ball really well. Most likely it's because they practice these patterns consistently. They practice these patterns over and over and over. So basic, just fundamentals. If we're a center mid, center back has the ball. How is my center back positioned is my center back positioned in a way that he's going to open up his body and they're going to play out to their fullback if they do do that then we try to move into the half space at least and what do i mean by half space if you guys have not followed us okay basically the field is divided up into field par five parts the wide areas half space central space half space wide area okay so if your center back is opening up their body to play out to the fullback. Can we be that option right here? Creating a little triangle. If your fullback is able to turn and play forward, then now they also have a couple options. They maybe have the winger in there. They maybe have the eight in here, or they have you. If you do receive the ball in there, our first thought is, can we play forward? Usually this one touch pass to winger or control and play forward. If this side is congested, and when I mean congested is we're getting pressed tremendously by the winger, the striker, uh, their 10, um, their right back, uh, their six, uh, their eight, are we at a numerical advantage or disadvantage? Right here, we're at a numerical disadvantage. We don't have an extra player there. So then your job as a center mid, as a six, in these moments, if you do receive the ball there, before you make that movement, you have to see the situation. If I'm looking at the situation, if I'm a center mid and I'm moving into the space, right? If I'm moving into the space, I need to understand that as I move into this whole space, we're at a numerical disadvantage. So if I do get the ball, those are the moments where I receive, turn, and switch. Okay? So just being able to identify those moments. And there, again, everything happens in a matter of seconds. Okay? Djokovic always says the wall is your best friend, 100%. <laughs> Same thing happens for uh, football. Um, analyze Hirona as Christian Suwani, bro. Okay, I will. Um, probably, I'll try to get a video out on that, man. 
Uh, I don't think you can learn this stuff. How often do you play football? Um, are you, if you're talking to him, he needs to be playing football every day if he wants to learn these patterns. What software are you using? I am using tacticalpad.com. Before you get the pass, you got to scan. Be once a better way. Yes, 100%. Got to be aware of your surroundings every time you are in the midfield. Guys joining the IG Live, welcome. And we are live on YouTube. Click on the link that is pinned and you can see what we are talking about. We have been on for about 30 minutes now. Don't worry if you missed it. We're going to get all this content and we're going to post it online. Um, my next question right now is how to position yourself as a deep lying forward. Okay, so let's clear the board again. How's everybody doing today, though? How's your day going? Where are you guys uh, watching from? I am I am in uh, Miami, Florida. It's currently 11, 12 a.m. Friday. You know, start of the weekend. After this, I'll probably be uh, going to the gym, getting some uh, workout in, right? Uh, let's set up the board here, guys. Can you explain why number 10s are going extinct, extinct in this modern era? Oof. I would say, uh, just like in anything, the game is constantly evolving. Uh, a lot of players, clubs, a lot of science research has come out that where people are now way more athletic, way more physical, way more stronger, agile and everything. Um, so I feel like that kind of overshadows your, you know, typical number 10 from back in the day. Like if we think about like Riquelme, for example, like that guy wasn't like fast, strong, wouldn't run like crazy, but man, hey, when that guy was on the ball, if you guys know, Juan Roman Riquelme, that guy was magic. Literally magic when he had the ball at his feet. That, now, you don't see as much. It's a little different now, I think. Um, I want to say just the way players are being produced now is... Um, maybe not they're not emphasizing enough on the express yourself as much right so i think in that sense that is why it's it's i guess quote unquote going extinct in my opinion um i'm not not to say that there isn't like some freaking quality number 10s out there because there is at all levels you guys see it week in week out um, but if we're talking about like lower levels from the kids, it's a little different, right? It's, um, it's not as, as like poetic as before. It's more just like da, 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 which is still effective. It's just a quicker way to be effective in my opinion. Um, oh, deep blind striker. Okay. Sorry. My strikers. So for my strikers. One of the main things for you as a striker is to understand the formation that you guys are playing. In this case, we're going to be playing a 4-3-3. So meaning you are going to be the lone striker. I am going to put a center back and another center back here. Okay. Um, okay, let's just put the back line because I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh, but the number two is supposed to be on the right. My bad, my bad. Okay. So as a center uh, center forward, if you're playing a 4-3-3, your main objective, okay, is to try and pin the back line as much as possible, okay? There's going to be moments when, yes, the ball shifts over, you shift across the defensive line. The ball shifts back again, you shift across the defensive line. Um, there's going to be moments when... There's gonna be space in behind, like if this defensive line has pushed up, 
the ball has progressed onto your side and everybody has pushed up the field and now the defensive line these four players are where the red line is there is now space in behind you as a as a striker now if we move these players i want to give you a quick example i'm going to move these guys up all these players up when you as a striker have this space all this space to potentially attack it's very important to make the correct runs how do you make the correct runs you need to identify and see cues that your teammates are making for example you see a lot of times on TV when a midfielder and a striker have that amazing chemistry De Bruyne Holland give you one main example really noticeable chemistry that they have okay when your midfielders have the ball and they have space to turn and play forward and they're facing the opposition's goal and they're facing forward that is your cue as a central striker to make the run if again i'm going to repeat that again if your midfielder is able to receive turn and face forward and they have a little bit of space to progress by dribbling or a little bit of space to potentially play a pass that is your cue to make a run as a striker not to check in you don't need to check in in those moments and now for example if number seven has the ball here and they have space the best run for you as a striker to make here is this one right here and then they're gonna play this pass right here straight pass diagonal run and we covered this before on some of these IG videos guys if you are on the IG make sure that you click the link in uh, the pinned comment so that you could see what we're talking about we are on YouTube live right now first time doing the live on YouTube so you know just just playing around with it I think it looks better on YouTube now I can finally show everything on the screen versus just talking to you guys like I used to do on IG see I'm just trying to figure it out for you guys man so just going back to that again if my midfielder has space to progress play forward as a striker that is my cue to make that run okay um it could be yes manu it could be a little chip straight pass on the floor whatever but the important thing is here that this run needs to be made as a striker for two reasons number one Center back might not follow you. You have that space. You get in on goal. Great. You score. Fantastic. Number two, you're going up against a great center back. The great center back is able to recognize that and do the opposite. Oh, their midfielder has the ball. They have space to progress play forward. That is my cue as a center back to drop off. So they drop off and they cover this run. Where's the space now? where is the space now center back dropped off everybody's dropping off now so your run just created a little bit of space in here and that little bit of space can now be occupied by another player something can happen there you run out as a striker okay you run out as a striker uh, maybe your 10 can occupy the space. Maybe you still have space to dribble and you keep dribbling. Okay. A lot of times what I notice is a lot of times players have this space to keep dribbling and they make this pass from here. It's too late. Center back already has that covered. So just having a little bit more composure, being able to analyze and see that space and identify that space 
and you just keep dribbling. Yes, it sounds so simple here. It sounds so simple, but trust me, in the games, when everything's happening 100 miles an hour, and you're thinking about scoring, 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 you just get rid of the ball quickly. And that's what happens. We lose it. Bad pass. We're tired. It gets intercepted. Whatever the case may be. Um, let's see if I have any questions on IG. Link not working. It should be working. It was working earlier. But I'm going to just go to footy tactics YouTube channel. There we go. Footy tactics YouTube channel. There we go, guys. Um, I have another question here. Box to box, thank you so much from Mumbai. Do you think reading a book about tactics is productive? I've bought the inverted pyramid and how to watch football by athletic. Are they worth it? I think reading books on tactics is 100% worth it. You're going to learn so much and gain so much information from other experts in the industry. So there's never enough um, information out there. You can always consume, 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 consume all that information. At the end of all of it, you have to be able to now identify your own style, your own philosophies, everything that you believe in, the, the, the style of play that you love playing, right? So all these things are very important to identify um, when you are learning about tactics. For me, I've played my whole life. Uh, I've learned this from plenty of coaches that I've had throughout my career. And it's just now I watch the game differently because before I was just playing probably the past like three, four years, I started just trying to learn how to communicate tactics, how tactics work, what a build out was, uh, what the phases of play was just like more in depth, learning from other professionals in the industry and just consuming all that information. Okay. Um, I'm your biggest fan. I watch your videos too from India. Samrath, thank you so much. How can I do movements and not get caught offside trap? Okay, so for example, if you are a uh, striker, so you're the striker. So for you not to get caught offside is before you make your movements straight into space, for example, make it across the line and then into space. It could be, for example, again, we're going to use this example. Your number seven has space to progress for play forward. You run across the line. And as soon as you get close to that CB, boop, make that run sharp. Okay. If you just make a straight run like this, most likely you might get caught off sides. That's, uh, that's uh, the main thing. Okay. Just making your run across the defensive line and then sharp into space. See if I have any other questions on IG. <laughs> Guys, thank you for joining in. If you want to join and see what we're doing, go on the YouTube Live Footy Tactics YouTube channel. I have the link pinned in the comments. Um, how do you be a high speed and physical defense? that is really close to the mid lane offer you to make through balls and knowing that they most likely going to win those balls. I think if you are going up against a back line that is fast and strong and physical, then the best way to do it is instead of playing into space where they're most likely going to always get to the ball first, you play to feet. You play to feet and a lot of movement off the ball because your job the other other players is to move the defenders so that we can create that space and once we create that space it's a little difficult now that everybody has to be on the same position or in the same page to then exploit that space 
if that makes sense. That that all is done in the training ground. I love if you explain how Thomas Mueller makes runs. Why is he so good at explaining kind of related you were explaining before? Um, let's let's go into let's go into the YouTube. Huh? Let's I like watching together with you guys so you guys can see what, what I see and kind of understand. Let's do Thomas Mueller highlights. He's a hey, he's a smart player. Let's watch this this video right here. Link not working. Guys, you can go to my story. I put the link there. It should work. Now just go to Footy Tactics YouTube channel. I gotta figure out a way how to make this better, man. I need everybody to be on these on these live to watch. Okay. So let's watch let's watch this video real quick. Make the screen bigger. Let's see a run that he makes. No. No, these are passes. Okay. This is not Thomas Mueller, but watch. Watch what happens, okay? Lewandowski checks off that defensive line. What is he doing there? He's attracting this defender, which is opening up space in where? Here which makes this player be able to exploit that space. So did you see how there's an interchange of movements there? I'll let it play again. Boom. That big gap in there. So that's why it's very important to make those movements. So as a striker, if you are high on that back line and there is space in front of you to check in to ask for the ball then can we check in and ask for the ball to attract that center back because then this might happen this is an opportunity that might happen let me see another clip here It's a great ball in. It's a fantastic ball in. I want to see. Let me see if I put Thomas Mueller runs. Runs. Somebody out there must have made a. Uh, yeah. Yep. There it is. Somebody out there definitely made a video. There it is. So if we look at this video. All right, all right. I need to see some video. Let's see. Quality is not the best, but here we are. Alright, let's see. Most of the time in there now, so he's mark by opponents. Okay, for those of you guys that were in the live from the beginning, do you remember? When I touched on the defensive line and the midfield line, just being in those spaces, he's doing this inside the box. My lights turned off my butt. So he's doing this inside the box. That's how he creates space for himself. Okay. Everybody's dropping back, usually in crosses, for example, if you're a 10 or you're an 8, you're running late into the box. Usually what happens is if your winger is driving down the line, about a cross, the back line is trained to cover this area right here. Everybody's gonna drop in. There is also, there's gonna sometimes be a little bit of space in the top um, by like the PK area. 
Um, a good center back, a good defender is going to be able to identify that. Maybe a midfielder drops back and covers that space. But sometimes there's going to be that little window of space. So that's what he always looks for. He's not looking for the player, whatever is going on. He's looking for that space to potentially get the play, the ball in those areas. I comment here on IG. Hello, brother. I've been watching your videos since January 2023. There, so maybe thank you so much, man. I appreciate your support. You guys are awesome. This is why I do this, man. I'm just trying to pass down the knowledge. There it is, that little bit of space by the PK spot. Between the opponent and the defender, it's usually hard for any midfielder. Track is running hard for any defender. Notice who's on the off. This is how he creates space for himself. Middle space, yeah. I see that. You guys see that? Oh, let's see the run now. Mm -hmm. So that that is what I would say is his strength as to why he is able to create so many chances. Yeah, and, and, they, and they said it at the beginning of this video. His game is not attractive, but he's effective. He gets he gets the job done, guys. He gets the job done. See if I have any other questions. See if I have any questions. Guys, I'm going to open up the last five minutes to any questions that you have about anything just let me know. I will try to answer as best as possible. The reason for the live, um, well, it was my first live stream on YouTube today. Uh, I've been trying to get everything set up for the past few days and finally I got it set up. So that is why I did the live today. If you joined on IG, I was just trying to get you guys aware of what we're doing on YouTube. We've been on for about an hour already and we're probably gonna be doing everything on YouTube because on YouTube I can share everything. I can show you the screen and everything that I'm looking to explain versus here I can only talk to you and show you the whiteboard. I have the whiteboard back there guys. Um, so next time we are on live which will probably be We'll try probably be on Monday. Is um, we'll try to break down other things as well. Okay, so thank you guys for joining in. If you have any other questions, just please let me know. Can we train with you? Of course, you guys can train with me. If you guys are local, send me a DM, and we can try to set up a training session. If you guys are not local, not here in Miami, Florida, we can definitely do some training via webcam um, where I'm going to show you guys actually this is what I mean okay uh, let's see let me see where I can go to Safari. so for example match let's go to a full match regular full match okay um, for those of you have uh, that have actually asked me about how I watch my matches I literally just go to YouTube and I type in full match whatever team uh, tactical camera whatever team and this is what shows up so if you guys want to show see games that are like this, this is what you have to type in. Full match, tactical camera, and you will see the game like this, in this way. 
And when you see the game in this way, you can identify everything, the formations in and out of possession during transition and all those little things. So when you are working with me via webcam, it could be covering a whole bunch of, a bunch of things, a variety of things, different topics, whatever questions you have. So for example, if we're looking at this match right now, Man City and Tottenham, right? Their build up. Look how look look where they're standing. Earlier, they're kind of in a 4-3-3. Two center backs. You have the six, fullback, fullback. Attacking midfielder, attacking midfielder, a little higher. And then the winger high. Striker high. Other winger high. Let's see what happens. Why does it look like that? And now it kind of turns into a what? Two, three, two, three, five. You guys see that? So two center backs, full backs get high. Center defensive mid is on the same line, kind of. And then striker, attacking midfielder, attacking midfielder. They stay high. They're not even involved in the play. They're just occupying this space. Do you remember what we talked about at the beginning? Trying to receive between lines, trying to receive in between the pockets. You guys asked me, what should a number 10 do? What should an attacking midfielder do? Here, this is one, one main example from one of the best clubs in the world. De Bruyne, between the defensive line and midfield line, in between the pockets. The ball is on the opposite side. What is the other attacking midfielder doing? Same thing, in between the pockets between the defensive line and the midfield line in the half spaces. So that is where their starting position is, okay? Um, we continue the game, let's see what happens. Not on on that side, so we restart. Pause it there. Again, in between the pockets, you guys see that? In between the defensive line and in between the midfield line. Fullback is high and wide. Winger is high and wide. Fullback is high and wide. The winger has tucked in now because the ball is on the opposite side. Striker is again in the in the in between the lines. This striker uh, is not high pinning up the back line. That is just their style of play. That is their instruction. It could be a little different everywhere else. Um, some strikers may be asked to make that run and occupy the wide areas, have that freedom to roam into the channels, to interchange with the winger, okay? Because if that ball was played over the top, so that some clubs do that, it might be on. See what happens next. See how the ball slowly progresses forward? with the center backs, they didn't even have to combine with the midfielders or anything. Center back, center back, center back, out wide to full back. So this is what we would cover if we were to work together um, and just break down every little detail. Uh, I usually break down every single detail with the player's game. So if you're a player and you wanna know if you had a great game or a bad game, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, you send me your video, I watch your video, I watch the full match, I do a full report, what you did in possession, out of possession, key decisive moments, and then my final analysis. After that, we get onto the phone call and we break down your game specifically. For example, if this was your game, I'd be saying, okay, so look, you see how the, the ball is wide? Why are you here? You should be there. Why are you here? You should be there. Um, and then if that was you on the ball, for example, why did you decide to cut in there? What did you see? What, what was going through your mind in those situations? Why did you make that decision? Right? The game at the end of the day is all about making the correct decisions in the right moment. And the more that we study our own game and the more that we study the game, we're going to be able to position ourselves in a way where we can make better decisions consistently throughout the match. 
So that is what you get when you work with me. We break it down to the T of what you did right, what you did wrong, what we could do better, what you can do a little bit differently to stand out, all those little things. So that is how you can train with me. If you want to train with me online, if not, just watch all the free content that I have online. This live right here is completely free too, right? You guys are watching this live. Um, if you want to learn apart from that, I have the position blueprints. I have so much, so much stuff there, guys. On the position blueprints, again, you get to see everything um, that I kind of talked about here, but now you have it. You have it for you. So anytime you have a question or you don't remember, you just refer back to it. And after learning and seeing it, now you got to take that information, take it to the games, take it to your trainings, and then try to replicate and identify those moments when you play. That is how you are going to become a better footballer. That is how you're going to improve your IQ by knowing exactly what you need to look for when you play. And when I talk about things like this, I am talking about a hey, the the technical aspect you should already have. This is something that you can work on by yourself. The technical aspect, having a good touch, making sure your passes are firm, not bouncy, making sure you have a good first touch, you can control the ball well, uh, making sure you can run and last a full match, making sure you're fit enough for that. There is a, a lot of people a lot on YouTube, you can find a full football workout, specific gym workout, fitness workout. I've posted about that as well. If you want to look at some of the training plans that I have as well, seven bucks, seven dollars on my website. Just go buy it and download it. Super simple. Um, follow, like you should always give yourself at least like if you really want to start getting to a fitness level that you can perform consistently as a player, give yourself at least 30 days to get a good, good foundation. And what I mean by a good foundation is you have a routine where you go to training or you go to the gym or whatever the case may be every single day that you can. Uh, and it varies. For example, if you are currently in season with your club, then you should not be going to the gym every single day. If you are currently off season, look at this goal. You guys saw that? Amazing goal. If you are off season, then that is the time to start getting stronger. That is the time to start working on your body. After that, now you have to be worried, worried about what you're eating. What are you putting into your body? How are you taking care of your body? Are you recovering well? Are you resting well? Are you eating well? All those little things come into play. After that, now we got to put that into practice when we play. Combine it with the tactical aspect. Combine it with the mental aspect. Combine it with the technical aspect. And I can go on here for another hour, guys, talking to you guys about all those little things. But that is just the physical part. Now, if we break down the technical part, hey, you got to be able to, to touch good, good passes with the right foot, with the left foot. Bring it down with your chest. Bring it down with your thigh. Uh, bring down a, a driven ball, a lob ball, um, a bouncy ball. A soft pass how do you react how do you change change pace how do you change directions how do you change rhythm all those little things that's the physical the technical part uh, and then we go into the mental part man the mental part I would say is probably one of the hardest parts to master because not only do you need to yeah, let me see if I can show you guys an example. I'm going to show you guys. If you guys are on IG Live, go on YouTube. I'm showing everybody on my YouTube channel exactly what we're talking about. The link is pinned uh, in the comments. If it does not work, go to my story and click on that link there. If that doesn't work, just go to YouTube and type in Footy Tactics, and I should be there live. Okay? So, let's see. 
I can't show you this guy. Okay, so let's let's open up this. A books mental. Let's look at this. I love this guy. Dan Abrahams, big shout out. Where is this one page that I'm looking for? Okay. So this ebook free download you can guys can find it for free basically what he's a professional sports psychologist that breaks down how to play confident how to be confident how to overcome any adversity so i know a lot of you guys because i've been in that in that in that in that boat before um you may be thinking i'm not good enough uh, you might have had an injury and you're like, oh, it's going to suck. The injury sucks. I don't know if I'm going to be able to play again. Or you may have just a moment where you're just not playing well. And you have all these like conversations and thoughts in your mind. So all these little things is just as important to train the same way that you train outside with the ball without the ball in the gym when you're running all those little things this mental training part is really important okay so uh one of the parts here that i love is how to play with confidence um and then he breaks it down super easy uh let's where's the part your mindset changes you focus on the negatives and you doubt yourself your body changes. You tremble and you feel butterflies. That is correct. When you have a negative mindset, you let all these negative thoughts creep into your mind. And when you let these negative thoughts creep into your mind, what happens? Oh, what's the point of training? What's the point of going to the gym? I don't want to go to the gym. What's the point of going out to run? I don't want to run. And then you don't do it. And then what happens? When you don't do it, what happens? You lose a day. You lose a day of training. Uh, and then, where is this other part? This kind of attitude is admirable. It and often perfectionism is not going to be your best friend. It can help you drive to train harder. It can help motivate you and help you play with passion. A perfectionist may set tough to attain goals and may dream high. Many of the world's greatest players have a hint of perfectionism about their attitude and character, but the attitude of perfectionism can be destructive, especially when directed to match day. What does that mean? To me, it basically means that we have this image in our minds of the type of player that we want to be, and that type of player that we want to be can only be attained a certain way of how we position ourselves now. So the habits and the decisions that we make today are gonna affect our tomorrow. So if we go back to that negative mindset that what's the point, da da da, like I'm just gonna lose anyway. Yeah, if you think that way, most likely that's what's gonna happen. And if you wanna stay stuck there, then fantastic, stay stuck there. But I don't recommend it. Cause then down the road, you're just gonna be Regretting all your decisions all the time. So how do you fix that? Basically, you got to start small first. You can't just all of a sudden be uh, having a winning mindset like this because you've had habits throughout your life that has not allowed you to have that winning mindset. So the way you develop that winning mindset is by changing your habits little by little. It might take you a month, it might take you three months, six months, a year. 
it might take you a little longer to achieve that one mindset that you really, really want to have. So one of the main players that we can model ourselves after that we really can look up to is, is for example, Cristiano Ronaldo. That guy's mindset is insane. So to achieve that mindset, that's freaking crazy. Okay. So to be, to be at least a small percentage of that, we got to look at ourselves. We got to look at what we do on a daily basis for three days. One of the main things that, that happens is for three days, you need to just write down your schedule. See what you do every day. If you really want to break it down, you do that for a week. Look at what you're doing for a whole week, every single day, the good stuff and the bad stuff. So when it's uh, when you look at that, you break it down, and then you start looking at like, okay, well, on Tuesday between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m., I was just on my bed watching TikTok and uh, just mindlessly scrolling when I could have been using that time to read a book or listen to a book. That's gonna help me grow. That could be one. That could be one example. Um, uh, today, I got home from work, or I got home from school, and I didn't want to go to train because I was tired. It's another example. We could probably fix that. Yes, maybe you're tired, but can you still go to training and still show up? Maybe that training session is not gonna be the top, top, top level like to your level, but you're still going to show up and get things done. And then little by little, we start fixing that. One of the main things to do is to set goals for yourself from a short-term perspective, mid-term perspective, and then long-term perspective. So what is your goal in the next 30 days? What is your goal in the next 60 days? What is your goal in the next 90 days? right? That's three months. What is your goal in the next 180 days, in the next six months? And then what is your goal in the next year? Because if you guys look back at it, the World Cup was already a year ago. How much has you changed since last year? What has changed since last year? I'll use myself as an example. My goal always has been to grow my social media uh, channel to reach more people so that I can talk to you about these things. My person, look, and I'm going to show you, you guys on, um, on IG live, I'll show you guys on IG live and then I'll show you guys on, on my, oh, I can't, I can't show you this one, but the magic you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. I have my schedule calendar there and I also have saved all my calendar from since 2020 every single day what I did every single day and I have like 10 notebooks where I've written down everything uh, I have my goals here my personal goals my business goals um, and then I have everything set up there so I write down everything this is how I like to keep track for those of you guys on YouTube, I can't show you this. Can we see it? Yeah? A little bit? Good? Perfect? There we go. All right. Let's see if I can put this back here. All right. So that is what the biggest thing is, guys, is just making sure. This is how you improve your mental, your mental side of the game. I've had a lot of players that come to me, I'm just not confident. Well, you know, confidence doesn't just start from the field. Confidence starts from home. Confidence starts from your daily actions, your daily activities, your daily habits. If you're not confident, do something that makes you confident. Like, what are you good at? It doesn't have to be football. It doesn't have to be anything else. But just whatever you're confident at, remember how that feels. And then little by little, can we start, like, inviting that confidence into other parts of our life that's that's how you're gonna slowly become more confident in yourself look at yourself every day talk to yourself in a positive way talk to yourself 
the same way that your ideal future self would talk to if they were there right now. So whoever that you look at yourself now, you're like, oh, I want to be this next year. I want to be this in the next two months. I want to be this in the next three months. What would that person say right now? That and that's exactly what we're we're trying to achieve. Okay, so that mentality part, that is what's difficult. Because trying to do it every single day is tough. There's going to be some moments where you're up on cloud nine. There's going to be moments when it sucks. Days that suck, but you just got to keep pushing through it. So, damn, an hour 15 already. See, I told you guys we could keep going for like a whole other couple hours, man. This is fun. This is fun. I think uh, next time we're going to just just talk about everything. Just let this stream just keep going. So whoever wants to join in can join in. But all this content that we're going to have now, I'm going to just, now I'm going to probably take it on and, and edit it and most likely be posting this. So for those of you that haven't seen the live, the live stream today, I will be posting some of it on the Instagram. Okay. So you guys can uh, see what we, what we were talking about. We talked about tactics earlier. We talked about the attacking midfielders positioning. We talked about all these little things, strikers, wingers, fullbacks. We talked about everything. Uh, we, we looked at some of the players, at their movements, the movements that they make. The benchmark for having good technical ability, physical ability, tactical understanding. And then I just went on a rant about the mental side. Sorry, guys. Took a little, little long. Mm, what should be the worst? Uh, what to find my profile? Uh. But yeah, guys, that's basically it. So, guys, on IG, be on the lookout on Monday. I will be posting a uh, time slot to do an IG uh, IG live, but also YouTube live. For those of you that are on YouTube, we are going to be going live on most likely on Monday. Okay, around the same time, 11 a.m., 10, 30, 11 a.m. Maybe if you guys are able to join in a little later, join in. If you're not able to join in, don't worry. It's going to be saved on YouTube, and you can go and watch it at any moment. And when you watch it at any moment, make sure to comment, share, send me a DM if you have any questions. And then we are also going to be repurposing that content and posting on IG so you guys can see everything. Okay. Have you studied some type of major? Uh, in college, I did study. Funny story. I'll tell you guys a funny story. So in college, I went just because, you know, big shout out to my mama. I love my mom. She wanted me to finish school. That's the only reason I finished school. I, I got my, my associate's degree. That's the only reason I, I studied. Uh, but my main goal as a young player was always to play. I always wanted to go play. So what I did was I studied sports management to start. I didn't even know what the hell it means, sports management. I just had the word sports in it. So I decided to study sports management. So what are you studying? Sports management. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> and then after that, I transferred over to a uh, university and I continued with sports management, but I guess I, I didn't really like the university to be honest. And that's why I came back to my hometown in uh, Maryland DC area. I went back to uh, college there and then they told me, oh, the credits that you took at this university does not transfer over to this college. So basically, I think I took like 14 credits that semester and they could only transfer like three. So basically, I went to that university for four months for no reason. And I said, hell no, I'm trying to I'm trying to finish school. I'm not trying to study this whole time. So what I did is I changed my major from sports management to general studies just to finish college quickly. I finished it that next year. Uh, that was uh, from the winter semester, fall semester, going into spring. 
And then, yeah, I think I finished it that spring. I just got it out the way, man. I got, I got it out the way and made sure that I was done with it. So then all I could focus on was, was footy. Um, but it's been a tough journey for sure. Super hard. Uh, but yeah, that's basically my story. That's my, that's my major. And then with everything here, I learned it by myself. How to edit videos, how to create social media content, how to like this, how to do a live stream on YouTube and share my screen at the same time. I just did it all by just searching up on Google and YouTube guys, you know? Um, but how do I know so much just by experience? Experience, yes, I've been out there, I've been places, I've done a lot. I've talked to so many people, I've connected with so many people. Uh, on top of that, I just like trying new things. So this is a new thing. I mean, this is my first time doing a live stream on YouTube. And I mean, some of you guys might be like, I don't know what this guy's talking about. Some of you guys may enjoy it. I don't know, but I'm going to keep doing it regardless. Like, you know, I, I just do things just to see how it is. And then I'm going to probably rewatch it and I'll be, I'll like pick at every little thing. Like, okay, this was good. This was bad. I need to fix this. I should change this. I should change that, you know? So when it gets to that point, I just little by little, we keep improving just like in the game. Cause that's all I know. When I was a kid, I would just go out and train every single day, uh, do dr cone drills, run, cone drills. I don't know what I was doing. So I just, but I just did it. I just did. I did what I saw on TV. At that time, Cristiano Ronaldo was 18 when I first saw him. I was like, this guy's a beast. I'm going to try to be like him. So I just did it, you know? And then little by little, I start meeting new people by putting myself out there. And this is very important. I start meeting new people by putting myself out there. And when I meet new people, I learn new things. And then I can also be aware of that, okay, whatever I'm learning from this person can help me in my life. Whatever I'm learning from this person may not help me so much. So, you know, they could just be my friend, but I'm not going to like take advice from them because they don't have what I have. They don't have what I want to have. I'm sorry. So that's kind of how I made, you know, how I got this ball rolling. You know what I mean? Um... At U14, is it better to play one position or multiple position? I would say you stick to one or two positions. Um, at you, from U8 to like U13, U12 is when you start just trying everything. See where you feel better. Coaches should be able to tell you that like, yes, you have a, the profile of a winger. You have a profile of a center back. And then you as a player are also going to understand what position feels better for you. What position comes more natural to you? Then at 14, 15, 16, you should already have that one or that that those two positions that are really, really, like those are my positions. One of my pet peeves is when I ask players, like, what's your position? Oh, well, I play fullback, I play striker, I play winger. That tells me if you play, if you play everywhere, that means you can't play anywhere. You know what I mean? There has to be that one position that you really love and that you're really good at and that you've been training for a while. And then that's your position. And then again, sometimes you're going to come across coaches that have that see a different quality in you. Like, for example, uh, the past weekend I was at a, an event. There is a great player, winger. We're with another coach. That coach saw him as a striker. Wanted to see him play as a striker. I've never played striker. I'm like, yeah, but you have the natural movements of a striker. So try playing striker. He did well as a striker. You know, but his main thing was playing as a winger. So I feel like as a player, you should have that one position that you really love and enjoy playing. That you really excel at. But you should also be able to uh, be open to other positions. For example, me, as a kid at a U14, U13, U12 level, I was playing as a striker. 
striker winger. I'm left footed, so they would put me on the left wing. As a striker, I was just good at dribbling. I would just go. But as I got older, I started going back. Then I started playing as a 10, and then I started playing as a 6. Uh, I've also played as a left back, I've played as a center back, but my main position is as a 6 CDM or as an 8 center mid. All right. Um, but yeah, guys, that's basically it. I will be traveling to California next week on Tuesday. So that's why we are doing this live next Monday. And uh, I hope to see you guys there. I'm going to share with you the behind the scenes of that event. So I'm going to try to get that content out for you next week. And you guys can see what, it, what it's all about. It's going to be very exciting gonna join in with a whole bunch of other amazing creators so um i will talk to you soon thank you guys for joining in that is it for today's stream that was fun man that was a lot of fun we definitely got to do this again we definitely got to do this again mexican food at california is the best i know that's what i've heard this is gonna be actually my first time in, uh, no, second time in LA. First time, I guess first time because I didn't really have the chance to be there for a few few days. The first time I went was, actually that's another quick story before I go. I went to LA to do a tryout when I was like 16 or 17. I went by myself, okay? Uh, I went there to do a tryout. I had no idea where I was going, man. No idea. I took the bus. I ended up on the field. Like, I landed. I'm from Maryland, so I was in Maryland, D.C. I traveled to L.A. I landed maybe, like, midday. And the tryout was, like, at 4 p.m. So I took the bus and everything. I got to the tryout. Tried out. After uh, my flight was leaving the next day, like, at 3 p.m. So I had to... I went to downtown, downtown LA as a 17 or 17 year old, 16 year old. And I was just looking for a place to stay, um, Googling, right? I don't know how I got a hotel at that young age, but I got a hotel for a hundred bucks a night. Sketchy as hell, super scary. And then, then I just started walking around downtown, just, you know, looking at places. After that, I woke up. I went to Venice Beach, um, you know, typical tourist stuff. And then Venice Beach was also an interesting story. Uh, I won't get into that now, but basically I got hustled. This young, this young guy, this young guy just, you know, trying to be a, trying to be a tourist for the day, just gets hustled. So I get hustled, I have like, no money in my bank account to go to the airport and I had to tell this I had to give him like a sob story I'm like look I have no money to get to the airport I need this money I'm sorry I can't I can't buy these things this is not what I asked for he's like yeah but you know you did this this and that, that. I was trying to buy a, like a hoodie and like pants that said Venice Beach you know as a typical tourist and they were like okay well the hoodie costs this the pants cost that and then you want to get the, the stamping on it and you got to get the lamination and this and that. The whole thing for a pant and hoodie was $95. And at that time, I was like, what? It was like 2016. At that time, $95 for that, for me, like, hell no. No, it was not 2016. It was like 2014, 2013 or less. I don't, I don't remember. Um, 2012 maybe I don't remember but at that time like come on I don't have that much money as a kid I can't be paying that you know so uh, I give him a sob story I'm sorry I can't do it I just walked out I left I got my my taxi to the airport I'm out <laughs> what an experience man I have stories for days let's see let's see if I have any other questions that's it alright guys so Thank you so much for joining in. We are going to go live again on Monday. So just be on the lookout for my post on Monday. Uh, we're going to go on IG Live. Same thing, same layout as we have it here. 
uh, we will be covering a whole bunch of stuff, okay? Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your Friday and have a great weekend. Take care.